Welcome back to the Ultimate Warp Zone. I am, as always, Captain N, and this is episode number 18. So today, we're going to be playing A Boy and His Blob. A weird name, but don't shy away from that. It's a great game. Now, before we get into any of the game, you know what time it is. Letter time. All right, so we have a mail-in letter today. Those are rare. This mail-in letter reads, Dear Captain N, What is your favorite Nintendo game? Jen. Well, Jen, my favorite Nintendo game I did play in the previous episode, and that would have to be Maniac Mansion. I do have the full box copy of that, along with Nintendo Power Magazine. If you go back, oh, put up on the screen what episode it was that you can go back and watch it but it's a great great game and sooner or later I want to do another episode with that but with the alternate endings just to show you how it goes thanks a lot for mailing in that letter Jen so a boy in his blob is a 1989 video game developed by Imagineering for NES the video game was published by Absolute Entertainment in North America and in Europe and by Jalico in Japan. Jalico also made Maniac Mansion. Now, the story follows uh, a boy and a shape-shifting blob friend on the adventure to save the planet of Blobonia from the clutches of an evil emperor. Now it is a platform puzzle game that has you control the boy and kind of control the blob where you can feed him jelly beans, he'll turn it into different things. You can also whistle for him and he comes as best as he can. If there's a wall, he gets stuck. Now, A Boy and His Blob was designed and programmed by David Crane, as you'll see at the starting of the video game, licensed by Nintendo in the summer of 1989 Development began and was completed in an intense six-week period. So Crane had described the game's overall concept of a boy accompanied by a morphing blob as unconventional and wanted to try his own hand at implementing a useful tool for the player. Obviously, we didn't see those useful tools, but we did get a pretty good game. Uh, there, there was mixed reviews on it. Uh, most of the reviews agreed the gameplay was original, some of it was poorly executed. Now, the game did win in 1989 Consumer Electronics Show, Best of Show, and 1990 Parents Choice Awards. Just because there's really no violence, you get hit, you fall down. That's it. Now, A Boy and His Blob was followed by a sequel on the Game Boy, as you can see titled The Rescue of Princess Blobette. I didn't play through all of it, but it had the same feel of the Nintendo Boy and his Blob. Now, after two failed attempts to bring the series to Nintendo's other handhelds over the years, they did a reimagining of The Trouble on Blobonia, and it was released on the Wii in 2009. That same year, the original NES game was re-released on the Wii Virtual Console, in North America and PAL regions. I don't know about you, but it seems like the Wii Virtual Console seems to be the best at the moment. We'll see Nintendo gonna update the Switch with some more games. Now, the plot involves a young boy and his alien blob friend in a quest to save his home planet of Blobonia. Now, you go and travel to the top of the city, the subwaves, caves beneath the earth, you have to grab all or most of the treasures so that you can get vitamins to help you destroy the emperor. Now you directly control the boy, uh, Blob or Blobber, uh, <laughs> as they call him, it's even in the manual, uh, is controlled by computer AI. So you can use different jelly beans to overcome different obstacles. For example, uh, if you feed him a licorice jelly bean, he will change into a ladder, an 
apple jelly bean will turn him into a jack. Whistling causes him to go back to his original shape and continue to follow. Now, once you get the vitamins, you'll also get the Vita Blaster Gun, which is used on Blavonia to complete certain tasks. We're going to see how far we can get. Uh, a little more information on the game. A total of 14 jelly bean flavors were implemented in the game. To ease the game's difficulty level, the flavors were named specifically as either puns or alteration to help the player remember them. Uh, the punch changes them into a hole, the term hole punch. Grape flavored, listed in the manual, but wasn't in the game. It was submitted to Nintendo, but they didn't accept it. It would transform the blob into a wall, a grape wall, a pun of the Great Wall of China. Ugh which would repel enemies. It, it would be useful because there are these caterpillar type things that jump back and forth. That would be really useful. But in an earlier version, the player could be separated from the blob, thus making it impossible to proceed. A senior manager of Nintendo viewed this as a bug, so Crane su substituted the grape bean for ketchup flavor bean, which instead summoned the blob to the boy's location. Hence, ketchup. Now, I don't know how many of you have played this game. I don't know how many of you beat the game. But you know what? Let's take a look at the manual. The cover has some strange artwork. Um, <laughs> the, the smiley blob. Oh, and when you throw a jelly bean at the blob and miss, he frowns. It looks so sad. Uh, enjoy my coffee while I can. So, let's take a look here. Now, there is the gearing up taking control. Uh, it tells you to move right or left, press right or left arrows, obviously. To call the blob, just whistle, press the B button. To turn a shape back into a blob, press the B button. So after it says turning him back into the blob, wait a second before tossing him a jelly bean because his mouth doesn't open. I, I don't know if it's programming or what. To select a jelly bean flavor, press the select button and the desired flavor will tell you what it is on the bottom of the screen. To feed the blob jelly beans, make sure the boy is facing the blob and press the A button. And you'll obviously feed the blob the flavor that's indicated on the screen. To shoot the Vita Blaster when you get it, you select the type of vitamins you want to shoot, A, B, or C, by pressing the Select button, then press the B button to fire. It says, no, the Vita Blaster is needed only on Blobonia and will not perform properly if you have not purchased the necessary ammunition vitamins. Start, pause, to continue, press the Start button again. It tells you that there are other worlds. <coughs> Excuse me. There's Earth and there's Blobonia. <clears throat> oh. Now, you can use what's called the Rupier Rocket. It'll get you right to Blobonia, but you don't have the Vita Blaster, so you can't make it. Next up, it shows scene on the screen. There's the score on the top left. On the bottom, there's a flavored jelly bean. On the center, Top is the number of treasures, TR, treasures to find. Top right is the number of lives left. It also lists vitamins left and number of peppermints collected when you do get them. To take a look at the 14 fabulous flavors of jelly beans, you start with 12. And you'll be able to pick up a couple more when you find the bags that are scattered around underneath the boys' town. There's licorice, strawberry, coconut, cola, Cinnamon, apple, vanilla, tangerine, root beer, honey, ketchup, grape, punch, orange, and lime. As you can see right there, grape was in the manual, but it's not in the game. Uh, it does have a little asterisk beside ketchup. There is one jelly bean flavor that the Bob Blob detests. Ketchup, in fact. If he accidentally ate one, he'd be petrified. And he doesn't eat them. You throw them at him. And he just keeps his mouth shut. 
Now, it does say about the amazing jelly bean, if you're over an edge and you want to know what's down there, toss a jelly bean. The screen will follow it and you'll see. Next up is Collector's Corner. Uh, through the adventures, you will find treasures, uh, peppermints, and vitamins to operate your Vita, Vita Blaster. There are treasures. Does say many treasures are protected by the subway serpent, serpent, a most deadly beast. It jumps back and forth. Jelly bean bags, that's where you can get more. Diamonds, treasure, peppermints. If you have five of them, you'll earn an extra life. And vitamins, A, B, and C. Next up is the menacing minis. Some of the characters and situations you run into both on Earth and Blobonia will not be too nice. In fact, some will be downright nasty, others even deadly. So on Earth, there's the subway serpents. They jump back and forth, falling rocks. You gotta protect yourself. The good old spikes. And on Blobonia, there's the magic marshmallows. Uh, shoot them. Don't run into them, obviously. The cherry bombs. Don't let them hit the ground or they explode. You need to use a Vita Blaster to blast all of them on the screen. If not, they hit the ground, you die. There's popcorn. Um, it keeps coming, but you can clear the path if you know how to. Chocolate kisses. Uh, they sound good, but they kill you. And the evil emperor. So, At the beginning of each game, you get five lives. When you lose all five of them, the game is over. There are three ways in which you can lose a life. If you fall more, it depends on how far you fall. If it's maybe half a screen, you won't die. A little bit more, you're dead. If you drown, the blob does have something to help you. And if you're hit by an enemy like a, a serpent, falling rock, cherry bombs, sweet tooth, and more. You can get extra lives like we talked about with the peppermints. Those are on Blobonia. You have to use the trampoline to get to them because they're high. They're a second screen up. You'll see them when you're flying in. Uh, tempting tips. To put a little distance on a tossed jelly bean, take a step while tossing it. Be careful where you carve your holes. It could be a long way down. If you have the blob above you and you just fell through the hole and you whistle, he'll fall right down on you and make you fall through. So you want to get out of the way. Whistling is one way to bring him closer, but if you're trying to position him in a critically precise spot, change him into a blowtorch so you can just put him down wherever you need to. There's a whole bunch of tempting tips there. You can see them on the screen and, and read them. So. Before we jump into the game, you know what we do, we take a look at the rules. So, if you're new, this is a poster that does come with a power glove. I don't have it, and it's too expensive to get on eBay. You're looking at about 50 bucks or more. But uh, we do have a digital copy on the screen. Now, you definitely want to turn off turbo for a boy and his blob. I don't know how it would react if you had turbo on and you start tossing jelly beans. We, we might even take a look at that. I haven't really experimented with the turbo. Um, I did watch a video on the Power Gloves scouring YouTube, trying to find more information. Um, I will have a later episode on what I found uh, and a bonus features with the Bad Street Brawler. That menu, if you recall, if you go back to that video, I really didn't know what that did, that long menu of codes. I now know what it does. So, let's load up the game. All right, here we are, the boy and his blob. As you see, David Cranes, 1989, absolute Jolico. Designed by David Crane. So, let's get ourselves comfortable here. Uh, I did find out what the clicking is, if you hear in my videos. The power glove is just picking up, or my phone's picking up on the power glove's clicks. I can't get any further away, 
So we'll see, we'll see if, if me getting back a little bit further will help. Okay, so we want to hit select, center, turn off turbos, squeeze our fist. There we go. All right, hit start. So as you can see down below is how many licorice jelly beans I have. If you use your finger, he whistles. And if you throw a jelly bean with your thumb, Blob eats it, turns into a ladder, you can climb it, and down he goes. So we have left and right, and the treasure is 22. So for the first treasure, let's go down the stairs. And over here, we're going to hit select till we get to the punch. Give it a toss. Down we go. I like the little music when he comes back from a ladder or a hole. There we go. Watch, if I throw a jelly bean over here, watch him. He's sad. So here's the first treasure. Let's move him over here. We'll throw. Wow, oh, we didn't want to punch. We want a licorice. There's licorice. There you go, buddy. Up we go. First treasure. All right. This is funny. I'm gonna see if I can get it done. He normally screeches to a halt. Oh, I didn't get it. Ah, we'll have another one. Okay, so we are going to go over to the next screen, Absolute Avenue. Get him over here. Okay. Oh. And give him a. You have to remember that you have to switch jelly beans. <laughs> I want to go with punch. Punch hole. So we're going to go down. We're going to call him back. And there's the first treasure. There we go, we got underneath him. There, so we come to a screeching halt, he looks down and falls. All right, so we have the first treasure on there, which is great. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go right. Another right. I don't know how far that drop is. So we are going to go to Vanilla. Vanilla Umbrella. It allows you to fall slower. There we go. We're going to drop the blob. Call him back. So now we have treasure number three. Yeah, three. One in the subway. One that we got previously and one now. So now what we're going to be doing is getting rid of the webs. You'll get stuck in there if you're not careful. So we're going to use the cinnamon. The cinnamon goes into a blowtorch. There we go. We're going to drop them, call them back, and then we're going to use a vanilla umbrella again, because on the next screen, there's going to be 
some falling boulders, if you remember. There we go. I'm going to drop them, call them back. Now here is where we're going to use the strawberry bridge to get treasure number four. Missed your mouth. There we go. Treasure number four. Come on back, Bob. So, now that we have treasure number four, what we're going to be doing is we're going to go down to the next screen. So we need to get the vanilla umbrella. To the right, there's going to be a little bit of a drop. Go to the right again. There's going to be a diamond up there. Place them down. Call them back. And then we're going to use the tangerine trampoline. Try this again. Okay, so we keep hitting the whistle button. We have to be careful with that. Give me just a second. I'm going to reconfigure the power glove. All right, I'm back. Reprogram the power glove. So let's try this. Let's call them over here. Oh, sorry, buddy. There we go. Hmm. Wants to be very, very sensitive with this. Missed you again, buddy. So up gets you closer to the diamond. And next, so you can fall. That's the safest distance you'd want to go with falling. So we have treasure number five. We're going to go to the far left and we are going to go to punch hole. Let's reprogram. Program one, enter, enter. fall down that far. Okay. That's okay, Bob. 
So we're going to go up over here. We need the licorice ladder. Go up one. Give him a call. Toss the licorice jelly bean again. Go up. Look at that treasure up there. Oops, want to call him? Guess the ladder can't eat the jelly bean. Up we go. Grab the treasure. Okay. We're going to take a little ride down. I'll show you the cola. He will turn into a bubble, and if you get in, you get a little ride and get a little tune. So we're going to Go down. And then from there, let's take a look. Let's go right. Let's do a punch hole. Down we go. And we are now going to go over a screen. And stop right here. Let's give him a call. Now we're going to be using the Cola bubble. I like the little tune it plays when you get in the bubble. So we're going to go down. And here's where it gets tricky. There are spikes and stuff in the water that can just burst your bubble. No pun intended. Well, maybe a pun intended. Here's one of the first diamonds. Oh, first diamonds. We've got quite a bit of diamonds. There we go. There is another one. It's very tricky to get to. You'll see in a minute. Hopefully we can get it. You know what? We're probably going to skip that treasure just because of how... Oh. Ah, that's, that's what happens. There's another one. Let's give this a shot again. So we know we have one treasure already. So there is one treasure down here that is covered with spikes. Ooh. Well, that's it for Boyd's Blob. Um, I'd say it's not very playable with the Power Glove. Uh, definitely if I had a controller. I've beaten it with a controller. Um, this is a longer episode, so we're going to leave it at this. You can get to certain parts of the Power Glove, but other ones, it's pretty unplayable. So, that's a boy in his blog. 
I do really like this game. Uh, lots of puzzles. And yeah, it's just adventure and puzzles. But as always, my name is Captain N, and I will see you next mission.